webinar. Today we're going to be talking about Microsoft Planner, but before we dive into that, we're going to look at um, some cool other tips and tricks we've learned as we're utilizing these uh, applications a lot more ourselves. So um, Sean is actually going to be the one demoing today. We're going to give Tina a little break this week. Um, but uh, rest assured, Sean loves learning about this stuff. And so he's dug in and is going to show us some cool stuff. And then we'll get into Planner. Um, of course, as always, I'll be monitoring for questions. So feel free to reach out if you have any questions along the way, and we'll be sure to get to those. So at this point, I'll hand it over to you, Sean. All right, thanks, uh, Christy, for doing this and set us up again. And thanks, everybody, for joining. I know we only got 30 minutes, so I'm going to speak fast. But um, I thought I would just show you guys something. So you notice we're in Teams again, starting from there. And if anybody who has not been on our previous calls, Microsoft Teams, you know, this is sort of a hub for communication um, across organizations. So it's not just a conferencing tool, as we keep saying. And I'm going to show you some cool stuff here in a second before we get to Planner. But with that said, you know, I just thought, you know, we'd talk about the topics today. But you know what? I don't love this second slide. So I'm going to go right here and see if I could make a quick change to it. It wasn't, uh, you know, I like that slide the way that is. There we go. So as you guys can see, I just on the fly changed my PowerPoint topic and slide within seconds right in Teams to be able to show you it a different way. So if you guys are into designing top or PowerPoints and things like that, there's some cool design features now that are included in your Office 365 suite, which make people like me who get lazy designing PowerPoints a lot more efficient. But with that, we're going to talk about actually Teams with Zoom today, um, which keeps coming up. So a lot of people are using Zoom, and I don't want you to be fearful of leveraging Zoom and then potentially putting it inside of Teams or starting it from Teams. We're going to talk about some cool stuff that's in Teams real quick. We're going to go into a product called Who, and then we're going to finish with Microsoft Planner, which I'll call the meat of the presentation. So hopefully this is helpful and ask questions, anything you want to know along the way. That's what we're here to do is train you guys. So in Teams, for everybody who's seen this little bad boy down the left-hand side, you're going to see all these things from what happens in my daily activities to chats that are happening in my organization amongst the different teams that we work within. You're going to see all the many, many teams, which we'll go back to in just a sec. Um, your calendar, which is synced up with Outlook. But I thought right here, this was kind of a cool thing. I, I don't think anybody has seen this before, but we've actually got Zoom integrated into Teams. So if I want to be in Teams or start from Teams and I want to create a meeting, I go here to my meetings up at the top. I would normally sign in, which I've already done. I would schedule a meeting just like you normally do in Teams. Uh, let's just call it Zooming for today. Uh, I would create a start date. I would put the rooms, participants name. Let's invite Christy who's on the phone. And, uh, oops, sorry. We would invite her who's on the phone, Christy Keating. And I would actually just send out the meeting invite from here with a meeting password. And you'll notice that the meeting now, if I look at my calendar, is gonna be right there. Five o'clock today, Zoom's meeting right after this one. Zoom, Zooming meeting, Zoom something. So anyway, Zoom can be buried right down here on the left-hand side of your toolbar as you see it, if you guys wanna start Zoom from in Teams. So really cool feature, especially the fact that you can go back into Teams and do this. So I thought I'd like to, sh I thought you guys would appreciate that for all the Zoom fans oh, out and there. I just I just got the alert on my end in Teams saying that I've been um, asked to join a meeting and I can accept or decline. So you could just Very decline cool. me today. <laughs> I'll so, <laughs> so let's go back a little bit real quick to Teams. We talked about this at length um, for the first two end user trainings, but people keep asking us, what is it? How does it work? So you can create within your organization, think about it as being sort of your file and folder system. You can create Teams across the organization from, we have a senior leadership team, we have like a training thing called the Home Run Derby, we have finance and accounting, we have many customers, we have a COVAD project we're working on, I mean, you name it. But for today, we're gonna go into our general demo team, which I've you know been creating and having some fun with, and I just wanted to just kind of start from there and just get everybody back into the habit of what Teams really is and how it works. So you'll see right inside of Teams across the top tab, all the different things we can do from create sort of that, I call it that waterfall of posts. Um, I actually did a video today that I did right out of Teams and it automatically uploads itself into Teams to publish to our company. Um, we can look at files and by the way, that file, you just saw that PowerPoint we began the slide, there it is right there, the work remote webinar. You can open it in different ways, whether it be open in you know online Teams, you can open it in um, PowerPoint on the desktop, you can do it however you want. 
but all these things you're gonna see are right there inside of your Teams folder under our uh, general tab that we've created for this demo site. But the big thing um, I wanted to go through today, oh, yeah, I even wanted to show you guys things like this. YouTube can be buried into Teams, and for those uh, Adele followers, you guys could take and publish quickly videos that you watch on the web. So we love motivational stuff, we love books, I love reading, and so a lot of the times I'll publish something that I saw from a, a motivational speaker that was out there or something in the community. So really cool stuff. And then you can do a lot more um, through many, many, many apps that are available to you to just basically put into your team. So um, with that said, I wanted to go into Planner. And you guys noticed across this team that we created, we've created a thing called Planner, or a plan under the Microsoft Planner platform, which by the way, is included in your Microsoft Office 365 subscription. So, so we'll Sean, start there by adding the plus sign, right? Yes, you can add the plus sign right here. You can actually go and start Planner from here. And then from there on out, if you create a new plan, let's just pretend we're gonna start to create a new one. It's gonna give you an option right here to create a new plan. You could call it uh, Sean's Good Stuff. <laughs> and you can save it. And, and if you already built a planner, a, pl a plan um, within planner, like on your web browser, that's what you can do with choosing an existing plan. So you have two ways to go about it. Yep, you can go directly into planner outside of Teams as well, through a web browser or just right into your Office 365 subscription. But again, this one just created itself ready to go. But again, there's no good stuff in it yet, even though it'll be Sean's good stuff. So I'm going to resort back to the other plan, which we've populated with some information. So think about Planner like a way that companies run project management. Think about it as a way to um, communicate information as an executive or a manager, but really get, get real-time dashboards about you know, what people are up to, how close they are to meeting their deadlines in a plan, um, what tasks they have in a plan, all of those good things. That's really what Planner is all about. And I can speak from experience in using it. You know, for me, it's sometimes I feel like I've sent out or I've delegated some things from a task perspective that I want done inside the organization. And I always ask myself the next day, how are people doing on it? Are they up to date? Have they done what we've asked? And it's just a really, really unique way of keeping track of things. So for the Planner people out there, I hope you love it. And for the ones who have never seen this inside of your Office 365 subscription, I hope you at least give it a try. So let's start with this. Planner sitting inside of Teams, okay? And I'm noticing, I'm sure a lot of you guys are going, wow, it's tiny inside of Teams. So if I do this up in the top right-hand corner, I can actually open up Planner in the actual web browser website. And you're gonna see it pop up here. You're gonna see the same thing come up. You're actually also gonna see down the left-hand side all of the other good stuff that I work on um, from other plans that have been published to me where I have tasks in there that I need to take care of. So let's start with this one from the very top and we'll kind of talk about some of the cool features in Planner. And if you guys have any questions, please let me know. So let's pretend we're doing a server refresh project for one of our customers, okay? So we're gonna be putting new stuff in their environment. In that, a project manager who loves this tool goes in and creates like different, what we call um, uh, tasks and activities under different components of the project. So obviously we have a project initiation, we have the server actual deployment installation and configuration component. We have the virtual server component of this where we have to do the virtual server configuration. We then want to go and migrate data. And then from there, we get rid of old servers, as they call it, decommission, and we then do documentation for our customers. And those buckets that Sean is showing you, server deployment installation, virtual server, those are all customizable. So whatever your business is, you can have the different buckets of what makes sense for you. And we, yep. um, in the meantime, we had a question come in and um, they're asking if Office 365 comes with Planner. Sure does. Yep. So, so yeah, it comes with it. Yep. And there's a lot of apps that uh, we're going to get through over the next bunch of trainings, but I think Planner is one of the coolest ones, especially when we're trying to keep track of what's going on inside of the organization. So um, we see it across the board for um, we've seen beer companies use it to figure out, you know, what different tasks are going on in different parts of the organization from kegs to packaging beer, bottled beer, canned beer, things like that. Um, it's really a unique tool. So in these buckets, you'll see right here that we've already created tasks, for example, ordering hardware. I'm going to go ahead and click into a task. 
I'm going to show you inside of the task all the things that can happen from, you know, from this one task in particular. So this task has been assigned to me, Sean Farrell. Um, you know, it's in the, as we talked about, the initial bucket project initiation. If I hadn't started the thing, I would have not had it. It comes in as not started, but because I've started it, it's in progress. If this is something, because we do need to make sure we kick off the project that's urgent, we want to mark it as urgent. And then if the start date happened to be, I don't know, the 21st of April today, um, that would be important. <laughs> and then if the due date happens to be the same day, because we want to get this project initiation piece out of the way, we can make it the same day. I can type a description of what it's about, you know, what we're going to talk about in our kickoff meeting with our customer. And I can also add list checklist items. Say I have like a kickoff plan or a PowerPoint or something that talks about all the things we want to talk about in the meeting. We can do that here. And then you're going to notice that if I click out of here, that has a bunch of information, who it's assigned to. This shows you your in-progress meeting. This shows if it's urgent or not, when it's due, things like that. So you'll so notice, can, yes, Can you assign um, a task to more than one person? You sure can. Yeah, so here's another bucket list, which is, um, bucket list doesn't sound always right, but here's another way to look at a bucket. Here's a server installation. This task is assigned to Janelle Mott. If I want to assign it to Alicia Aktabowski as well, I can just click her name as well and it's assigned to them. And we can talk about in the, in the bucket, the different tasks on the checklist right here that each need to handle. And they can go through those, knock them out. And then from there, talk about that they're still in progress and you know what the finish date's looking like. And um, you know really add any comments here as well. For example, if I wanted to report back to Alicia or Alicia wanted to report back to me, hey, I'm running late on this plan, she could do that here. And the notification I would get comes in Outlook. Okay, so again, back to the Outlook integration with Teams and Planner, everything that happens, happens back into your Outlook. So always be aware of that because that's where most people seem to source information still. Sean, it looks, um, there was a question about attaching files in Planner. It looks like within a task you can do that. You want to show everyone? Sure, yeah, absolutely. So you'll see right here, if say, I don't know, I want to make an attachment of a file or a link, a link from a website, I can actually go in there and I don't know, we could talk about the CARES Act, which is a very different plan that we normally have, but we could talk about our managed service calculator and you'll see right there, there's the Excel file attached to this particular bucket within the plan. Really cool. Awesome. And you can actually edit this from within Planner. So it's a really unique feature. Um, another question, someone's asking, clarifying, what, what do you mean that it notifies you in Outlook? So oh. can you talk well, about Sure, if I, let's see how the sharing of the screen goes. I'm gonna bring this back over. Um, hopefully everybody can see my screen. Mm -hmm. So let's say um, Alicia, who we just talked about before, was assigned a task. I'm gonna click on this. And you're gonna notice down below, Alicia got this email on Monday the 20th Virtual Server 2, New Virtual Server Secondary Domain Controller, you've been assigned a task. You notice that right there? So it's actually showing that Alicia, who was assigned the task from my particular bucket or my plan, got that in her email. And she can jump right into Planner from Outlook and, of course, go through and state whether that thing's in progress or she's working on it or what have you. Perfect. The other thing I love is that it'll notify you um, if something becomes overdue, too. So if you... I've missed a deadline, you know, you're, we're all busy. Um, so you'll get a notification like, hey, this is due today. Or, you know, if it's past due, you'll get the alert that you have overdue tasks and you can look, you can click right from that email into that notification to see what you're missing. Or you get a call from your manager and says, come to my office. <laughs> Hopefully not. But, <laughs> so, um, so uh, one more question. Can yeah, you yeah. Planner calendar in Outlook. Can you see planner calendar in Outlook? Yeah, so I guess can I guess they're asking, can you see your tasks in Outlook? Maybe they could clarify. Yeah, so let me show you a little bit of the, how that works, and I'll show you how the integration works with the schedule. So let me jump over real quick here to what's called charts. You're going to notice for all the people running any type of plan or project or anything they're doing to keep track of things that you have what's called the status. So in this particular plan. There's 23 total tasks. You're gonna notice 17 of them are not started, six are late, or six are in progress, um, none are late at this point, some are completed, 
And you can actually drill down into that over here in your bucket list and in your buckets where you can actually see, you know, what things are not started, where you guys are, you know, finishing things or in progress or where things are completed. You can also see over here from a, a task perspective, you know, what's going on within each um, bucket and what's, you know, where these tasks move to and fro. So interesting how you can kind of dive in between and just see what you got going on. Back to the question about the calendar, people can actually go in here and look at, for example, the week, and they can view in the calendar what's happening within that plan and jump right back into the task within that bucket. So as an example, the order hardware, which was urgent, it was due on the 21st, you'll see that it's in progress on the 21st if you want a peripheral view, um, but it's not yet completed. But if that task got completed and I wanted to go in here, and I also wanted to move the date back, like somebody asked earlier, you're gonna see that that task is no longer on the calendar because it's been completed, which is nice. So it kind of keeps you up to date of things that you need to get ahead of. You can look at this, go ahead. I was just gonna say, this seems like a, it seems like a great way to stay connected while remote, you know, on top, you know, between a department or organization as far as getting your stuff done. Yeah. I mean, we use it to keep track of our ongoing to-do list of things as we do a lot of our process improvement, as we call it. Um, and then we also use it for what we call our forced innovation type stuff, like all, all just kind of keep track of them in the plan. And then, of course, in the different buckets. We so schedule... Know. Oh, Another question, um, is Planner only on the web or is there an application as well? Well, so Planner can be, Planner is a web-based product. So if you want to be able to right click or put the actual Planner app on your toolbar down below, you can pin it if you want. But when it opens up, it's going to open up in the browser because it is technically hosted by Office 365. Right. You can use it within Teams, though. You could do a lot of this just right in Teams if you're using Teams. And yeah. there's a variety of ways to do that. Yep. If you guys are watching my screen, you're seeing I'm in Chrome, my Google browser down here. There's the planner. Here's the board. Here's all the buckets. If you see me jump right back over to Teams, you're going to notice I can see the same thing. There's those tasks. There's the not started. There's the late. There's the completed. Everything just the same in Teams. So very much the same thing. Um, but I'm for purposes of showing this today, hopefully where you guys can see it, I'm kind of keep it into the big screen on the on the Google yeah, Chrome browser. It's easier to see in the Chrome, but personally I like to use it within Teams because I'm usually using it with the sales team and it's easy to stay, you know, on top of things or with the leadership team, whatever we're using it for. So. Yep. So we saw the schedule, what you can do there. Um, we go back to the main board where you can see, you know, all the different buckets and what's going on there. But one of the cool things I thought I would show you guys too was um, all the different ways that you can see what's going on from the members who are part of the plan in particular. Uh, and I got to make sure that with us doing this Zoom bridge, it makes it tough to move across the top. But you can see the members that are in Outlook. And what happens, by the way, is that the members of each plan get created as a group. And so this group in Outlook can receive emails as a group about updates to the plan, which I think is a really cool feature versus sending an individual email to people as you go. So you're gonna notice copy of the server refresh group, the four members are, I think it's Christy and Alicia and a bunch of others. So let me jump back over here to planner again. What, oh, about, um, what about people outside of your organization? Are you able to utilize it with that or? Sure, yeah. So when you create members, you can create members in or outside of your organization and give them different rights to be able to leverage the planner that they've been included. Very much like creating a team inside of Microsoft Teams, you can leverage outside entities to be able to join calls or share a screen or you know, send a document to. Again, with the rights and security that we've talked about before where you know, certain things, I only want this Excel file in my planner to go to this person and they can't forward, you got to make sure you have those tools enabled so you know companies have a high level of security. Awesome. So yeah, so back to plans. A lot of times, you know, companies go, God, I, this plan, I'm going to repeat it over and over and over again. You know, I'm going to use it for a different project or I'm going to use it for a different, um, I don't know, right now with COVID, you know, a lot of people are using planners. They're looking at helping um, feed different entities, seniors, homeless, um, young kids. And so they're using plans for different parts of their organization and copying the plan by the way, right here and starting a new one. And in that they can rename, uh, change up things in that plan, reassign tasks, you name it. 
Let me go back a little bit here. Let's just pretend we have to set up a new task. I want to show you how easy it is. So let's call this server uh, refresh prep. I can set a due date from here. Let's say it needs to be done, be done by the 22nd. Again, I can assign it from here to Tina and I can add the task and it falls into this bucket, server deployment, install and configuration. And then again, Tina, because it's now assigned to her, should be getting an email notification right now saying this task has been assigned to you. And she can go in there and do all types of, all types of things to say that she's in progress or she's finished or she's gonna you know, potentially not have time so she needs to push out the task. So it's hey, really Sean, cool. what if you accidentally yeah. add a task to the wrong bucket? Can you move it? Yeah, you can actually move the task right here to a different bucket, um, oops, sorry, to a different bucket right here. So maybe we wanna move over to project initiation. So it goes over here now. Cool. And that happens all the time, but a really easy way to do it. And you can copy tasks and have, you know, potentially two of the same in different buckets if you have to repeat the same, you know, same thing. Very cool. All right. So the other cool feature I thought was, you know, what are assigned to buckets? Like for example, who are all the things assigned so, to me? I'll go can ahead. We back up a second, and yeah. you, um, someone was asking how you actually create the buckets. So you had this planner already set up. Can you show how you could create a custom bucket? Uh, sh sure. So let's do this. Up, oh, sorry. Let's do this. Let's actually go back and do 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 do. Where did it go? This is where Sean loses a little bit. The way to create a custom bucket in Planner is to... If you go back to the an original buckets, if you're not looking at it as the assigned to, so group yeah. by bucket, and then if you scroll all the way to the end... Yeah, normally at the end, you can create... There we go. Sorry, yeah, I didn't see it go. before. You can add a new bucket. So here's how to add a new bucket. Sean's happy about the... Uh, the project, okay, and then you create it. There it is, add a task, um, good times, and set a due date, the 23rd, assign it, and done. So it's really easy, and again, a lot of people will either copy a whole bucket, or copy a whole plan, or just copy a task. Any of the three can be done. But what I do a lot is I'm curious to know things like who's assigned to certain things. So Alicia, it looks like she's in charge of the configuration of the Hyper-V host, and there's the, the, uh, the, the attachment that goes with it. Um, looking at things like Janelle, she's got, you know, she got assigned um, the good times about the project and work plan and, and one of our products ConnectWise, and you can see that she's got that in progress. You can also look at progress and see what's not started, what's in progress and completed. This one I use all the time only because I'm always curious about where we're at here on the in progress and what's been completed. You can look at due dates to kind of see what's late, what's outstanding, um, what's due today, what's due tomorrow, and then, then, and then ongoing this week, next week, no date. And you can go all the way down into things like, you know, what are the priorities from important, medium, low, you know, urgent, um, you name it, you can dig down deep. But probably the biggest thing, if I'm the person hosting the plan inside of Teams, is this screen, which shows me kind of where things are at from a holistic perspective on my charts view. And this is where our project managers, our finance teams, and we're working in a finance project with our outsourced accounting firm get together and really leverage Planner to look at the different tasks that have been completed. Got a question there, Christy? Yeah, so someone said, it, you said you can copy a bucket and they use the same tasks multiple times for different events. How can I copy an entire bucket when I book a new event? Copy an entire bucket when I book a new event? So I think, um, I think the way I, if I understand the, um, the question correctly is I would probably copy the entire plan for the next event, and then you can remove any tasks that aren't relevant to that event. Correct. Most people, what they're doing is they're coming here, and I'm back in Teams, by the way, if everybody watched, and I'm going back to the copy plan, and I'm then taking that plan, and whether it's I'm putting it into a different, you know, new plan that I've created. When I create a new plan over here on the left, you'll see plan name, um, and I can, do, again, back to what you guys asked earlier, can I add members that are, you know, public or private, and then create a plan? Um, I could just create a test plan to create the plan, made it public so people can see it from the inside and outside. 
it'll create the plan and then I can copy that old bucket over to this plan. So that's planner, that's planner within Teams. And one last thing I thought I would show you guys was that in my Teams platform, I have my apps like Zoom, as I mentioned, or even WebEx, if you guys are into Cisco as a WebEx tool for conferencing. But over here, if I go into planner, this takes me to all the plans that I in particular, Sean Farrell, have to get taken care of. And as you can see, I've got a lot of things past due and a lot of things that I just haven't gotten to. But you can do that from Planner. All right? Um, we had another question come in. Um, they're wondering how you can delete a bucket. And also, can someone add a task in a bucket you created? So yes, you can add tasks in the buckets you created. Um, but do you want to see how we could delete? Uh, delete a bucket? Yeah, I think you have to wait until there's no tasks within it. If I you're grouped Correct. by priority, you want to go to the top right and click group by Oops. bucket. There we go. Um, I don't think you could delete a bucket unless there's You no can actually, yeah. Oh, you so can. Okay. So you, even if there's tasks assigned to it. So yeah, yeah so if you do copy a plan, like so for that ex the event example, and you copy the event plan and you're doing a new event and maybe one bucket, maybe it's a virtual event instead of in-person, so all these in-person tasks aren't relevant, you can just go ahead and create that. Yep, and there you go. I mean, that's how you do it. There's the little, we always call it the, this is, they can, they, Microsoft calls this the general tab. Some people call it the ellipses, but right there, if you wanna to go to the bucket in particular and delete it, you can do it there. If you wanna delete the entire, um, leave the plan, you can leave it here. If you wanna change settings on it, if you wanna actually, back to the question earlier, add the plan to your Outlook calendar, and I'm not gonna do that because it's gonna populate quite a bit, you can do it from here. Okay, you can see the members in the plan, like I mentioned earlier. Um, all of that can happen from sort of the management component up here. So one last thing I wanted to show you guys is you see now Planner sitting there on the left-hand side, or you see Zoom sitting down the left-hand side of Teams is a product that I thought would be really neat for you guys to think about using called Who or Microsoft Who. So if you notice this, this is a bot or a, a sort of a learning tool that based upon all the information you've put into Teams from a Word doc that has certain information about, I don't know, call it Office 365. If I wanna ask a question, who knows about Office 365 in my company, it's gonna go out and search inside of my Teams and storage platform, everybody who's got information about Microsoft Office 365. And then from there, I can click on that person. It's gonna ask who is Richard Sway's gonna manage solution. It'll bring him up. I can go right into an instant message inside of Teams or a chat to Richard. And by the way, he's not expecting this. So um, he'll probably say something mean to me. But uh, Richard will get that in the chat function and he'll get back to me. So where I'm going with that is that a lot of companies, healthcare, pharma, people who do research um, are looking for expertise inside of their organization. And this type of tool gives you that ability to source things that are happening very quickly. It was a really cool tool built right into Teams that I thought you guys would find interesting. So anyway. Awesome. Yeah, that's really cool. I hadn't, um, I didn't know about that until you told me about it in preparation for this. Yep. Um, jumping back to the Zoom integration, Sean, we had a question come in that I want to make sure, um, sure, even if we don't know the answer, that we'll get it to them. They asked, so when you were like scheduling it and you started typing my name and it wasn't filling out, do you know, do you know why that was or do you know how you get those names to populate? Because I, I noticed it was only a few people in our organization that showed up. And if you don't know, that's okay. We can um, circle back with this person, but I figured I'd ask. Yeah, so um, what it's looking for- well, It looks for, like it's going up now. Yeah, so it takes a second. So what it's looking for is what's called your global address list. And if you have an Office 365 account, that has been uploaded into Teams. So it should be able to source everybody in your organization. Gotcha. If I'm looking for an outside email account, of say um, my dad and I wanna send it to him, I'm probably gonna have to type in his email. Okay. But again, that, that is the reason why. That's called the global address okay. list and that just has to make sure it's syncing. And so Perfect. very simple to do, but that's how that works. Um, another question about the Zoom and Teams is the security settings on Zoom mirrored to that which is set for the Teams app? No, definitely not. So Zoom, this came up the other day in a meeting we had with 
some executives, Zoom is very different. Zoom has now added more security features into its platform. But the best way I can describe the concerns that I've seen around using Zoom from a security perspective are this. When a person goes into a Zoom meeting, whether it's just logging on through that click-through link with a meeting ID or they actually host their own meeting, they're putting in a set of credentials, okay? S. Farrell at Managed Solution. I won't give you guys my password today. But after I do that, there's nothing in that asking me to what I call, you know, multi-factor authenticator, two-factor authentication. So when I'm in there and people are watching through the internet connection, the, the Zoom bridge that's up online, what they're finding is that these actors, as they call it, you know, what I'll call hackers, I guess, people trying to really break in, are, tr are tracing and trying to get in through the bridge, which can be potentially an open connection, and then come back to see the credentials you put in there, okay? So the difference in, like, say, Microsoft Teams is that on the back end of this, to get into some of these things, as you saw, I think, Tina in her previous meeting, she's getting a text on her cell phone that shows a code to get her in, so we can verify that it's really Tina. And we're also um, enabling what's called self-service password reset so that Tina's forced to change her password every so often um, so we don't see those same passwords get trolled um, through products that you know, we're using, say, such as Zoom. So it's super important. The, 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 the security policies are not mirrored. There's a whole different set of them in Microsoft Teams than there are in Zoom. Perfect, thank you. Um, is that all, Sean? It looks like that's all the question. Oh, what do we have? One more. Most things. Is, okay. Um, no, that was just a statement. So, um, do you have anything else to add today? Um, no, I think that's it. I, you know, any feedback you guys can give us on what you want to see, what products within, you know, the Office 365 suite. I think we're going to continue to come back full circle and talk about the integration with Teams. So, if you guys have any ideas, let us know, and we'll make sure we get you guys trained on it. And hopefully it helps your experience, you know, continue to grow. So that's it. Awesome. Thanks again for joining us, guys. We'll catch you next time. Thanks, everyone.